Sup, devils? J Dog back with another goddamn motherfucking interview. And today we got goddamn Joel Grind from Toxic Holocaust, Yellow Goats, <laughs> Kinder Barbados, Tiger yeah. Junkies, War Ripper. I don't even know if I'm supposed to say that. Am I supposed to say that? Yeah. Like, Cats yeah. out, of the, out, of bed, out of the bag, yeah. right? That's been out for a while. And now, then yeah. uh, the only thing I haven't heard that you've done yet. You did like a 10 inch, what was it, Don John, some shit, or? Um, Davey Allen. What, what is like, that? I, that's the only thing I haven't heard that you've done. It was like fuzzed out, like, so basically there was like, in the 60s, there was like all those biker soundtracks that were just like, kind of like surfy kind of sound stuff, but very fuzzed out, like fuzz guitar shit. And it kind of sounds like that. So is it like metal though, too? There, I mean, you could definitely tell there's like that I come from a metal background in that, but so maybe 50 50 if I like it because I remember well, the thing is, Hell's got some in stock because there's relapse to put it out, right? Yes, yeah. We got them in stock, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? I was like, yeah. is this the same Joel? And before I got to listen to it, they sold out, yeah. and then I'll obviously, I go, obviously, I go back and you know, YouTube it or even buy yeah, it, yeah. but I completely forgot about it. Yep. So people ask, I was like, I was like, actually, I've liked everything Joel's done. I was like, actually, I was like, I can't say that, but that's the only thing that I don't know. Yep. But the Tiger Junkies and all that shit. Awesome. Even the, uh, the only, because Barbados, I think it's all pretty decent. But yeah. the best thing is definitely the Fury, Chaos. The oh, one that, that shit said, was yeah. fun as hell to do, too. Those lyrics are fucking great. They're like, I was it, laughing my ass so off you, singing those fucking songs. You kind of just did that on the fly, just being in Japan, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just going over there and, and meeting, like, the Abigail guys and stuff. And, you know, they wanted me to... You know, do a guest appearance on there. So, did you do that at the same time as Tiger Junkies then, or did you do that like going back? So, let me think about this. Tiger Junkies is going later. back a while now. So, yeah. I think actually the Barbados stuff. I think I actually recorded in the U.S. Okay, but it was thought about in Japan. If you know what I mean, like yeah. they they basically like told me they wanted to do it over there, and I think they gave me the tracks and I did it at home. But but Tiger Junkies you recorded there. Yeah. yeah so you yeah. guys just wrote all that shit. Not, and then... The seven inch was, and then the other stuff was recorded later on. But... Oh, the uh, the album. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I thought that was just kind of a thing. Why? Because you've been there. How many times have you been to Japan? Three now, I think. Three or four. I'm I'm actually not sure. I think it was three. When was the last time you been there? That was. Fuck. 2011, 2012, maybe. Oh, it's okay. It's been a while. Now. Yeah, okay, good while. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I'm ready to go back for sure. Oh, okay, that's great over there, especially for yeah. record shopping. Yeah. Holy fuck! Every yeah. record you've been missing, like in your record collection, it's over there. In for Japan? Sure. Yes. Really? Yes. It's like the most insane record stores I've ever seen. The only guy, I mean, who runs? Uh, he would buy from us, but he'd be under his name would be Record Boy. Yeah. Is it, what's the store called? Yeah, it's record, just Record Boy. Record Boy? And okay. it's like kind of got the Broken Bones like band like logo outside, and it's got like an A-frame board when you walk down the street, and you just see it, and it's like this fucking really small, like, I mean, it's tiny, but it's like packed full of like punk and metal shit. It's fucking great. Wait, and, uh, he's still doing that, right? Because he hasn't, yeah. I don't think he's ordered from us in a while, but so would he have shit from like the 80s and shit too, or like? Yeah, like all kinds of stuff. I think they get trades and... You know, like, who knows how they get this stuff. I'm, like, I'm always blown away. Like, you see stuff that you don't see anywhere else. Like, I, like, and multiple copies of shit, dude. Yeah. I'm, like, how the fuck do, do they have, have like, a lot of the Japanese pressings there easily where the Joby strips? Oh, like, yeah. Old, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that shit. It's it's dangerous going over there. Like, your fucking wallet's hurting after you go over there. So you definitely bought records while you are there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, bought, like, a suitcase to bring records home. So do you still listen to records this day? Or, like... Oh, 100%. Yeah. Okay. Was well, I didn't Preferred. know if you jumped on the download band? I mean, on tour, yeah, of course. But, like, you know, everybody kind of does that, you know, because for convenience, convenience like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. But, yeah, I mean, at home, for sure, 100%. Yeah, okay. Because well, it's I, a different experience, you know what I mean? Like... The record, where the break is on the record is where it's supposed to be, you know? Like, you flip it, and it's, like, side B starts with a song that, like, usually hits yeah. out of the gate hard again, you know? A, like, a, new, a new song one. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, uh, obviously, with Toxic Holocaust, it's definitely thrash-oriented and punk-oriented. So what do you consider yourself, more of a thrash guy, a punk guy? And from what I understand, you like some death metal, too, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. So, yeah. like, what do you consider? Old cons school shit. More like, like, what do you consider yourself mostly, though? Like, I mean... I would say my my heart is like just the stuff that made me want to play music was thrash, you know, okay. like nuclear assault stuff like that. Like from like skateboarding with like a friend that his older brother got us into all like the fucking shit like Megadeth and nuclear assault. So that's always where my heart lies. And then like later on, like digging into stuff, getting into like Venom and, and things like that. So like that wheelhouse is really where I'm at. But you know the punk stuff, of course, too. Kind of all like especially with stuff like Venom and like. When you have like Venom and like GBH and like Motorhead and all this stuff, it kind of like all isn't that fucking far from each other, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's sure, like sure, sure. Discharge and stuff, of course, but 
And then as far as like death metal, like so you said you like older stuff. So I've asked this in Southern interviews. You said you don't watch any of my shitty interviews, but I've asked this in multiple times. What do you consider like the first death metal record album, not demo or anything? What do you consider the first death metal album in existence then, in your opinion? Man. I'm curious what your opinion. I have, a, I have a pretty good idea what you're gonna say, but I could be wrong. But I've gotten similar answers, but I mean, some different ones. I guess I could say possessed, maybe, but that's what most people have been saying. You know, yeah. but you know, Death Strike, like stuff like that kind of stuff, like the Paul Speckman shit, like it's like, and that's like right in the fucking early stuff, but it's like punk death metal, which is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, possessed, I would say probably. You know, could say onslaught, I guess too, but. Mm-hmm. I would say possessed for it. Like, did you did you like any of the '90s stuff, like Deicide, Cannibal sure. Corpse? Yeah, did yeah. you like any of that stuff? Yeah, I, I love uh, you know the self-titled Deicide record. Love Once Upon the Cross too. And, okay, you know stuff like that. But you know, I like I mean, Alters of Madness by Morbid Angel. Fucking, that's one of my favorites of all time. Well, it's funny, regardless of genre, you know. Like, well, because the consensus of when I asked greatest death metal records of all time, the, the most popular votes I got. Was either Seven Churches or Ultra Manus, yeah. people have been saying. Yep, absolutely, man. So that, that was the most a... common opinion. I've got a few different answers than that, but that was the most, that's got the most votes. For sure. So yeah. that's why I asked that relatively, because. It's kind of like when you say what's black metal, and you say, you can say Venom is like the first black metal band, or like, you know, they go like Mayhem or something like that. Well, what I say, for example, I think Venom created kind of like the, uh, the, the imagery of it and right. the name. But as far as black metal sound, in my opinion, it was the first Bathory. Bathory, for sure, 100%. Yeah, because, I mean, there was nothing early. That's, like, the actual sound of Correct. black yeah, metal. Correct, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, just even the vocals alone, everything. It was just that that's what black metal carried on to, to be. Right, exactly. So that's, I think that was totally kind, of easy, kind of easy to figure out. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah, with death metal, it's a little, like, muddy because it's just, like, you know, possessed. I mean, you could just say that's that's thrash, too. That's what yeah, same But it's, like, they have the song death metal, so, like, they yeah. named kind of that, but, you know. Kind of like black metal by Venom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, You yeah, name it, sure. but then is it really, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but at the same time, I can see that because, like, songs like Fallen Angel and shit by Possessed, I mean, that's nowhere near, like, Megadeth or Anthrax. No, no. So it's, it's, it's just definitely darker, and it's got the satanic 100%. lyrics. So and I the guess, riffs are And, and even just the, vo- and just even the vocals, too. Oh, they're, they're definitely different yep. than any other thrash at that time. So I, I think calling it the first death metal record because that's what i consider the first death metal yeah. personally as far as lp yeah you know so absolutely yeah so i'm gonna assume based off tonight's set list that uh in your opinion that hell on earth is your shittiest album <laughs> as if you correct me if i'm wrong once i went to the bathroom i didn't hear a single song off that album it's so true man you know what's <laughs> funny it's like I, I like playing songs off that record. It's just kind of like for live stuff, especially on this, kind of more of like a thrashy kind of like, you know, like just a. Well, I don't know, dude, man. I mean, that's got that's some, more of like punky kind of in a way. Dude, it's got some serious skull, skull stompers on there, like Metallic Crucifixion, that's Rise right. from the Cemetery, Ready to Fight, Burn. I mean, I think that's got uh, songs that'll grab these fucking posers by the throat, and there's plenty of them here tonight, too, oh, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. I mean, I gotta say, don't know your taste. Wasn't a fan of the two openers. Yeah, I didn't know them, but I was just like, I had a, I had to step outside. Uh, Havoc was I never heard. I never actually. I, I knew the name. I thought that was pretty decent. Yeah. Uh, there was a straight up a thrash band. The other stuff was kind of like, what, what the fuck am I listening to? Um, so I thought that was a little bit of a weird bag. So, um, but it seemed like a lot of people. Uh, to be completely honest, it's, since you guys were, which I thought it was weird too, because like I said, I've heard of Havoc. Yeah. But I'm like. How the fuck are these guys headlining over uh, Toxic Holocaust? It's like, no disrespect. It's like, I'm pretty sure these guys are newer than Toxic Holocaust. I was like, I've heard of you guys. I've seen it come through hells. Never listened to it. Yeah. Uh, I was like, I don't know how you guys are headlining over them. But what it seemed like by watching those crappy openers, watching you guys, and waiting for your ass to come down watching Havoc, I was. Uh, it seemed like you guys had the biggest crowd. So it seemed like most of the people came out for Toxic. Well, that's awesome. I, I, you know, like... A lot of the times I'm not like paying attention, you know, to the other stuff. So it's like I wasn't either. It's like it's kind of it's good to hear that because um, you know we just do what we do. And well, with that being said, actually I got to ask you this because uh, it's, I, it's always I've always wondered it. What is your opinion? And I remember when it happened when the overdose of death came out. You signed a relapse. You guys, for example, like I've in my opinion during Evil Never Dies and Hell on Earth. And I know I was there selling the stuff through Hell's. Yeah. I remember like the, the seven inches of shit were coming out. Death Master. What was the uh, seven inch on uh, Iron Bonehead? Uh, Hell from Hell. Yeah. yeah. I remember getting those in, and they were like flying out the door. In my opinion, as far as underground metal, you guys were the hottest fucking band out there. And as soon as you guys went on to relapse, all the poser ass fucking traders, yep. they're like fucking toxic Hollywood. Yeah. 
And I'm like, yeah, he went to a bigger label. I was like, but the music's still the same. I was like, it's one thing if he changed the style, right. the direction. I was like, that would that, then I get that. And you know, what I, was your take on that? I knew that was gonna happen, honestly. Like I, I, because I knew the scene that it was in. You know, it was yeah. kind of hitting that. And Midnight went through the same shit. So yeah, like I see yeah, people yeah, doing the same shit. You know, with that. It, I, I question how much they're actually in the music. Though. That's that's what I think. I'm like, you don't actually care about the music. You care about how Status. obscure it is, or like yeah. what, like, you know. Yeah, exactly. Status. If you're like, if you know something that someone else doesn't, then, then that's, you're like, that's cool. Than yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. And that's not about the music at all, man. Like, if you, I, I would totally get it if you change the sound or the style or whatever. That I hundred percent, I, I agree, I agree. But like, if you guys put out like, if you put out an overdose of death and you pulled like a carcass, like we're doing a heartwork album now. Yeah. I'd be like, okay, yeah, I, I, I get it. I get why you're ripping on it. Yep. I was like, but you, I was like, for example, like my favorite Toxic Holocaust albums actually are Evil Never Dies, and then actually my second favorite is an overdose of death. Awesome. So I was like, and as much as I love Hell on Earth, I was like, I thought the third album was even better than the second one. Yeah. So it's just like, I, I don't like, I, I don't get it. But people even, even sometimes on my channel when I talk about talks, they're like, you mean that sell out talks to Hollywood? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, how? I was like, dude, selling out is changing. Like, for example, when Metallica put out that deplorably unlistenable load album, uh, yep. that's selling out. You're right. changing what you set out to do 100%. to sell more records. Right. I was like, they never. I was like, they never did that. Right. I was like, so I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get that mentality. What, I always look at it this way. It's like, it, is it selling out if you're actually doing what you want to do? Or is it, you know, like trying to appease like a certain fan base? Yeah. And if like, you know, like, you know, Relapse made us an offer. It was like, it was a good offer. And it was like, we didn't make like a fucking boatload of money. It was just, you know, something different. And like Relapse isn't like signing to fucking Sony or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. It's a, you know it's just weird how people's perception of that kind of shit is and like you said I don't think people like that are actually into music I think they're more into like the fashion of what obscure patch do they have on their Correct. jacket I, what I agree. fucking I agree what demo did they buy off eBay that's yeah. like more obscure so they can show off shit on at Instagram. this point what demo did they YouTube on eBay yeah yeah that, exactly. that, they don't even fucking own the actual tape true. that's true at this uh, point this day so I'm like dude you mean you YouTube it fucking two days ago yeah. don't, don't don't give me that shit yep. You know, so yeah, dude, you should see odd uh, because you said you kind of breezed through my channel, dude. If you ever want a good laugh, just look at some of the fucking idiots in the comments. Yeah, I was like, dude, first off, I know you're 16 years old, and second off, I mean, just shut the fuck up because you just you just sound and look stupid. Yeah, I mean, and you know, like those are the exact kind of people I don't give a fuck about anyway. You know, so it's yeah. like I knew it was coming, and it just didn't really matter. You know, it was like I'd rather do what you know I want to do. Honestly, like that's. If I'm making myself happy, then fuck everybody else, honestly, like, at the end of the day. Because that's what music is for. It's like an expression yeah. of, like, you know, what you like, you know? It's like, thousand percent. I agree. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, they said doing what you want to do. I was actually surprised over all the years that you've never done, because you've done, you know, like, seven and just like that, that you never did a split with Nunslaughter. And the reason I know, why right? I say that is because you covered them, so obviously you like them. Oh, yeah, I like I mean, of course. I don't yeah. know if you like everything to date. Um, they have a lot, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. So <laughs> you guys covered so much stuff. I have no idea. You guys idea covered. Don't them. correct me if I'm wrong. You covered Emperor in Hell, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so um, that's a killer dude. I uh, I was kind of surprised because them doing all the splits. You bring around this, and it's funny because Nunslaughter's biggest popularity, from what I've seen, and again, I just go by what's moving and shit like that, is right around the time that 2005 era. Oh yeah. When Toxic was. I, you coming know, coming up, so I was like, I was kind of, I, I always thought that was weird. I was like, why don't they do a split together? Because I know Don likes Toxic Holocaust. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when Evil Never Days came out, I remember being at Don's house. He's like, this is the greatest record to come out in twenty. Because that guy doesn't like anything after fucking eighty nine. Right, right. He's like, he's like, this is the greatest record to come out in over twenty years. Damn, dude. Um, that's a that was that's what he a said. Big compliment. That's fucking awesome. So, uh, I was surprised because he liked the band. And you like Nunslaughter yeah. and both being under, I was kind of always surprised that you guys never did a split or something that worked. I know, and like, you know, at one point we were both really pro prolific, you know, I mean, Nunslaughter still is, you know, but it's like, yeah. like yeah, you yeah. Know, I just don't release as much music as much anymore, but like, yeah, I'm surprised too, actually. That would have been, that would have been pretty rad. Yeah, yeah. Well, what is that? Uh, because the last, first off, the last album, what label is it on? I don't even like. So it was on a label called E1, but they're called Monarch now. Yeah, so I don't even like, like how to change a name. So you're not on Relapse no more? No. And so are you officially on this label then? Or, or Yeah, we're doing another record on on them. but Okay. It's and, it's actually really good. The, the main reason for the switch was just because their dis distribution was better in Europe. They're distributed by SPV in Europe. And like the problem when being on Relapse that they had. I think it's better now, but at the time they had like an issue with like their European 
Oh shit! I figure they're just huge. I, I always so relapse had like a thing with their European distribution where it like burned down or something, and it was like it fucked oh, okay. like everything up for a while, like getting records over there. And I think it's better now, but at the time I was just like, you know, like kids over there, we go to Europe and like they're looking for our records again. Oh, they wouldn't have them. Okay. And I'm like, you know, that's one of the main reasons why I even signed to relapse is because like. You know, the demand was was greater than the supply, you know. I wanted more people to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a, that's a good problem to have, though. You know, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so. So, what, uh, when do you think that, because the last record was, I think that was pre-COVID, right? Was that 2019? Yeah, it was. So, the new one's almost finished. It's, like, kind of, you know, in the mixing stage right now. But Is it, like, the same old shit? It's faster. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, a little bit more. I mean, it's... It, it, it's. The same. I mean, I never really do anything that much different. Yeah, I'm yeah, pretty yeah. limited in my writing. I like a certain thing, and yeah, no, and that, that, and that's that the, like realm, you know. But no, and honestly, when you try something too different, that's when the old fans become disappointed. I only like a certain amount of things, you know. What I mean, so it does, I don't really stray too far away because my tastes are kind of just like in this like, you know, dated bubble of just this, you know, that kind of influenced my writing from early on and. I just kind of branch from there. Oh, okay. You know. Well, let me say, so with everything in your catalog, let's just say everything you've done, including shit like Tiger Junkies, what would you say the thing you're, not what's sold the best, not the fan favorite, right, right. what is your favorite thing you've done? I think Overdose to Death, honestly. Is that your favorite? Okay. Just because of the time period and everything, it's like the memories of that time period, like wrapped up in it and everything. I think that was probably my favorite just from, you know, you know, you're younger and like the excitement's like, of like everything's like kind of new at that time you know like not saying that i'm not excited about things now but it's like it's different when everything is like fresh yeah you know, like you like you're experiencing things and like that whole rise from evil never dies to overdose was like probably the greatest time of my life honestly like from all of the experiences what was that was that oh six so evil never dies came out in 2003 no 2003 then, was overdose overdose is 2008 so 2008. that, that okay. five-year run was probably like yeah yeah just a great great time period of you know and like but that's overdose your favorite, kind of like so that's your I favorite think, just because your time period or like what you think musically you're most proud yeah, of yeah music too yeah because okay. I, I think that's like when i kind of perfected what i was hearing you know like and i was like that's kind of what i wanted it to be you know so it's like it's like it's it's tough when sometimes your expectation doesn't meet what happens like the release you know and like that was one where i kind of matched up what i wanted it to be and it was you know so okay. kind of well, so then Overdose of Death, as far as LP-wise, that was the first album where you printed the lyrics. True, yeah. What was the reason you didn't print the lyrics in the first two? I don't know, honestly. I think mean, maybe I was like a little bit like self-conscious about the lyrics then, just because I was younger and didn't really okay, know what I, pretty, I mean, good, you can but... understand 80%, at least yeah, I can. Right, a lot of people oh, cover this cool shit, and they get the lyrics. I'm like, cool. They got them all right? I don't know, but like pretty close. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Close enough that you hear it on like Instagram or something. I'm like, yeah. I mean, well, I was surprised on your lyrics. on your set list too. We'll print the lyrics for sure though in the future. I was surprised on your set list you guys didn't play uh, 666 because in my opinion. We've been, so we've been switching the setup on this, and we have been playing Hell on Earth too on this. Well, because we just mix it up night by night, and I, I kind of just call the songs out and then we play them. So well, like, in case you haven't realized, but it just it could be it could just be me, but I thought it was kind of as a fan thing too. I thought uh, to me. Going to see Toxic Holocaust, they don't play 666. It's kind of like going to see Cannibal Corpse, they don't play Hammer Smash Face. Right, right, right. It's kind of like, that's kind of like your Hammer Smash Face. Right. That's true. So I'm kind of like, oh, what the fuck? I left, I didn't see Hammer Smash Face. Some people like, say that about War as Hell, so it's like. You know, it's what my actual favorite uh, Toxic Holocaust song is Enemy of Jesus. Oh, cool. And I don't even know if you know my Enemy of Jesus uh, shirt story, the Monroe Muffler. No. I told it on my channel. Do you know the story? I don't remember the story, no. So, dude, when I was 20 years old, so I just moved out. I moved out of 20. Me, Eric, and Chase bought the house and ran hells out of it, right? Yep. I go to get a fucking oil change, a Monroe muffler. And I was wearing the Toxic Holocaust Enemy of Jesus shirt, right? It's the manager taking orders or whatever. I go to get my fucking oil change. And he's like, what does your shirt say? It's, like, it's a band, dude. He's like, but it says Enemy of Jesus? It's like, yeah. And he's like, I don't know if I can wait on you. He's like, what do you mean? He's like, well, that's Enemy of the Lord. I was like, yeah, I don't like Jesus. What's the problem? Yeah. Are you Jesus? Yeah, I was like, he's like, he's like, well, yeah, but that, that's that's my Lord and Savior. I can't, I don't know if I could uh, give service to you. I'm like, do you own the company? Yeah. He's like, no. I was like, well, my money's just as green as other. I don't think the owner gives a flying fuck. Right. I was like, not to mention, I think I'm pretty sure I could sue your ass for not yeah, giving yeah. I, like, I was like, why don't you just put a sign up front saying no blacks or Jews allowed? Right. I was like, isn't that illegal as a check? Because it's yeah. supposed to be a, this supposedly supposed to be a freedom of religion, right? Right. 
He, like that's how the video. So got, you have got, to he, believe in every single thing that every customer that comes in this. But place. he got kind of shell shocked. Yeah. And he's like, oh, 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 oh. so like, he took my thing, but obviously I never went back there again. I'm like, yeah. So fuck Monroe Muffer, fuck you, and go fuck your Jesus. Right. Uh, but that's that's literally that was a true goddamn story. He didn't he didn't he didn't like your shirt, Joel. Good. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> that's fucking rad. Um. Yeah, I'm trying to think about anything fucking else. So, yeah, yeah. what do you have uh, to add? Anyone I don't anything, you, don't want any, you don't I'm fucking brain dead right now. I just... <laughs> Yeah, are you going to do any other side projects or anything like that? Because you've done several through the years. I mean, like, well, it depends way. Do you think you'll do anything with, like, Yellow Goat again? Or was that just, like, a one-off? Or Yellow Goat is amazing. I have, I have shit on my hard drive. Day for Yellow Goat? Like, that are written. Yeah, I've had multiple people come up to me, like, yeah, dude, I fucking love that Yellow Goat. You know like, what's yeah. funny? More and more people ask me to do that live, which is so funny. Like, I never thought people would even really know what that is. And, like, all the time people are like, you got to fucking play this fast or something. And I'm like, really? That's so weird. Like. It's cool. Well, I mean, lot, it's very cool. But I'm, just, time, like, I'm surprised that people have heard it because it's like, no, you know, did, never really promoted it or any like thing like that. So I mean, we just cool. we put it out and people bought it. And I, when I heard it, I was like, it's great. I was like, it literally sounds like Toss Hall was trying to play Bathory. Fuck yeah. I was like, I was like, I, I, I don't, I liked it. But in recent times, I have had more people saying, like, dude, I love that yellow goat. Yeah. I was like, like, I was I've been like, wondering yes. like what ticked up that because it's been dude, out of press know, for a I long got time, a, and I'm like. What like what is like taking that like interest in it again? I'm like the only thing I can think of is it's kind of like this. Um, how do I want to describe it? Is like this kind of uptick in like that old school to what you know. If you, there's almost like that kind of feeling in the air. It's, it's a catch twenty two. It's good, but it's bad. It's like you should like what you like. Yeah. Where it's like if you don't like the oldies, like bathroom and shit, you're a poser. Right, so, right. The, so the 18 year olds just shit getting in, they're like, oh shit, I gotta like this. Yeah. And I think it's maybe that, is that they figure, oh, well, this is bathroom worship, you gotta yeah. like bath. Cause I can tell you right now, bathroom sounds, every time we stock bathroom, like when we get those restocks, the, especially the first four, dude, fucking Gone. flies on shit. Every time for years on end. And it's almost like, I, I think that's cool because I like seeing that kind of music sell. Totally. But I always, I, I, part of me is like, but do you really like it? Or are you just yeah. buying it because you feel like you have to? And otherwise, you're going to be. And you see the t-shirt and stuff, like, and you see other people wearing the shirt. Yeah, it's, but I almost feel like they feel like they have to, otherwise they're going to get made fun of. So yeah, if you, it you don't like it, you don't like it, man. Yeah. Can you show what you brought him aside? Oh, man, sure. But fucking, they could get to see their own goddamn <laughs> shit. I mean, yeah, I, mean, I brought the, uh, the, uh, so actually, yeah, I didn't realize this until I brought this for Joel to sign. It's funny, I mean, I, it's not that I didn't realize it, it's just, I told you guys a million times, the last fucking 20 years of this shit blurs together like one goddamn long 100%. day. Yep. So, and the older you get, the more the time goes by fast. This right? was the very first Hell's Headbangers picture. It's like, Gordon the Spine, it says Hell's Picture LP 001, and it was the Evil Never Dies picture this. And it was with a die cut cover, and we pressed this in 2004, so next year it'll be 20 years. Do you remember how many copies there were of that? Uh, I, I don't need to remember. It says right on the back, rah, rah. Oh, does it? I have number three That's of right. three, three, three. Dude. And if you, I don't know if you remember, Joel, after this sold out, we had extra covers or something. That's right. And we pressed the Overkill edition, That's and right. it's got the different cover different. on it, which I own that and as well. Does it have the, does that have the bonus track too? Because there was like a NME cover or something on yeah. one of them. Louder Than Hell. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had another question for you too, because I'm Don of the Dead and Athnar are fucking making my dick ish. And specifically, it reminded me because the cover and what you're wearing. Oh, yeah. The cover. Anyways, I got to ask you a question. Uh, yeah, I was, before I thought I was going to ask this. So, <laughs> Don of the Dead and Afnar, they're like, dude, that first rigor mortis. Ah, man, I don't like it. Where do you rank first, that? Because to me, I think that's, like to me, that is easily in my top 15 oh, thrash metals. Matter dude. of fact, I made a video. The guitar playing on I made a video. Insane. I made a video on my channel that you don't watch of my top 15, <laughs> my top 15. I've seen it. Well, you didn't see this one. My That's top, true. my top 15 favorite thrash albums of all time at rigor mortis, rigor mortis is in there and yeah. no dick riding, but actually evil never dies is in there too. No way. Yeah. Thank way, you. way, fucking way. Thank you, man. That's yeah. awesome. And people were like, That's no it. Megadeth. I was like, dude, I like, I like, I like Tosca Holocaust way more than I like yeah. Death. Wow, that's fucking yeah. That's so, so uh, the question is, where do you rank? Because I was like, to as me, that's in, a ten. As in like, like, like on a number scale or like yeah, what? Yeah, a number genre? scale. Yeah. Okay. Because um, I love that record. Fuck, man. You know what's funny? I, I would probably say 
Shit, that's tough. I don't like normally think about it in that kind of. Definitely top twenty for sure, but like probably like. Yeah, I, top ten. I would say like that's the one. Here, the reason why this is like maybe it's different because of they when they might have heard that record. So I got that record on like. It was just a random thing, you know what I mean? It's like going through a record store when I was, like, young and seeing that cover and just thinking it was so cool. Yeah. And, like, you know, a lot of records sometimes are, like, a time and a place thing when you get into them. Like, oh, that, that Sometimes you don't like the the cult record by a certain band. 100%. Yeah. When you got into it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so, I always say, dude, the first death metal album I heard was Cannibal Corpse Vile. I was right. 11 years old. Yeah. And people are like, that ain't Tomb of Mutilate. I was like... I was 11, dude. Right. That's what I heard first. I don't right. fucking it's tell when you. you get into stuff, yeah. too. That's another thing. Like, when you actually like music, it also is, like, when you get into it. Yes, and like, 1,000%. Those records that you get into first, kind of, like, you always have a place in your heart for, you know? Yeah. That. Oh, my first record was, oh, man. I mean, if, for actual first record, it was probably, like, Guns N' Roses or Motley Crue. Well, you're a couple years older. But, yeah. Well, how old I'm 42. Are you? Okay, so. okay, you're four years older than me, because I'm 38. Like, Shout of the Devil or something like that. But, like, you know, it's like, but I'm 42, so yeah. it was, like, kind of, like, that was the shit then. And I still love that stuff too. But well, because for years, because seeing like, because when Evil Never Dies came out, I was 18, so still young. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't really hear these elitist opinions. So when I right. saw Evil Never Dies, Rigor Mortis shirts like that, and I already liked Rigor Mortis. Yeah. I assumed everybody just knew this is a great masterpiece, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. And I meet these guys. Well, I, I knew, knew those guys, and I hear them, I'm like, I'm the surprised fuck? you heard they don't like that. That's the stupidest answer I've ever fucking heard in my life. That's crazy. Uh, but that, I that, love that, the guitar that, playing on it. And yeah, I dude, love, the solos are amazing. Yep. His his like right hand like picking is so fucking cool. And like another thing that's kind of underrated about that record, I think, is like when he does the solos, there's no rhythm guitar in there. It's like the bass is just playing, which I think is so cool for Somebody a record like that. Picked up on that. Yeah. It's like it's like they. It almost sounds like they just recorded it live because it's like there's no rhythm like guitar. Well, what I liked like so much about it, yeah, was the solos. And obviously, these songs are great. It had the gore lyrics for Thrash, yeah, yeah, yeah. which nobody did. And literally, it was a Thrash record. I was like, nobody sounds like. Yeah. Nobody. Like, it's hard to believe that someone would hear Wizard or Gore and wouldn't like it. That sounds killer. That's what those two I guys told me. I, just, I, I, I just got up and left the room. I'm like, yeah. get out of my car, dude. <laughs> I was like, that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. So. I'm going to have to talk to. Yeah, you got to talk to Bolton. Yeah, Bolton. and Big D. Fucking just talking out of their ass, goddamn it! I was like, yeah, but you probably haven't heard it since '88. Right. You go right. back and go, oh yeah, it's pretty fucking good. Right. You know, because I've heard that more than once too. So. <laughs> anyway, Joel, anything you want to add? No, I'm good. Thanks for having me, though. This is fucking awesome. Yeah, no problem. All right, Devils, that's it for this one. Later, goddamn it. <laughs>